Kiana Miner here. Welcome to Crazy Courage TV where we are busting success myths and learning to live more courageously. Today I'm super excited to be with you today and I think I say that every week but um, no doubt I am super excited to be with you every week. <laughs> and today I am changing the scenery up just a bit and I wanted to share with you a question that I get. So people are always asking me, how do you have courage on a consistent basis? You may have had that experience where sometimes you're courageous and you're boldly moving towards your dreams and getting stuff done. And then other times you're holding yourself back. You're shying away from what you really want to do with your life or who you really want to be in this world. And you're not really taking the actions that are going to move you forward. So how do you have courage on a consistent basis in order to really go after your dreams? So first what I want to tell you is that courage is a part of who you are. It's something that you have to cultivate within you in order for it to come out in your words and your thoughts and your actions. Courage isn't what you do, it's who you are in the deepest places of your beingness. And so in order to bring that out, you want to cultivate courage. So I'm going to share with you three ways that you can start to cultivate courage today, right now. In fact, one of those ways involves an activity that we're going to do before this video ends. So the first step to really cultivating courage is having a spiritual practice. Now that may not be what you want to hear. You may be thinking, how in the world is that going to lead me to more courage? Well, remember that I said courage is really an inside job. And so you have to cultivate your connection to the power within you, which is a divine power that lives in all of us, that lives in the entire universe. It's the power that created us. We want to tap into that power on a regular basis. And so this is my spiritual toolbox. I believe everyone should have a spiritual toolbox because a spiritual toolbox is so much more powerful than religion. Religion says everyone has to do certain things in a certain way in order to achieve that divine connectedness with God. And spirituality gives more freedom. The reality is we're all individuals. And so what works for one person may not work for another person. So what I encourage is instead of finding a preacher or a priest or a guru or a religion to follow, I encourage you to put together your own spiritual toolbox. This is my spiritual toolbox. It's called love <laughs> because I think that's the most powerful force in the world. But your spiritual toolbox is all about collecting the spiritual rituals and practices that make you feel like your most authentic and powerful self. So I'm gonna show you the contents of my spiritual toolbox. These are just some of the things in my spiritual toolbox. I won't have time to go over everything today, but I'll show you just a couple of things. This is Ganesh and he's part of my spiritual toolbox. Ganesh is part of the Hindu religion and so my toolbox is full of practices from different religions, practices that feel good and authentic to me and help me stay connected to divine power. Ganesh is my buddy. <laughs> A lot of the ancient styles of communication involved images and pictures and symbols. So for me, Ganesh is a symbol of overcoming obstacles. This elephant, every part of this statue, every part of this elephant, from the trunk to the ears, represent ways in which we can overcome obstacles. For instance, his ears are like really big. And that's because we need to listen. We need to listen to God in order to overcome obstacles. I have a lot of things that has the image of Ganesh on it. I have jewelry, I have books, I have posters. And it's all to remind me that when I'm connected to my most divine self, when I'm connected to God and the universe and divine energy and the Holy Spirit, that I have the power to overcome any obstacle. The other thing in my spiritual toolkit is are my mala beads. I grew up in Catholic school and um, uh, we always use the rosary to pray, either the Hail Mary or the Our Father. And so the beads, um, so many different religions have beads and they're really prayer bees, they're mala bees, and they help me keep count as I chant. So chanting is another spiritual practice that is very prevalent in Buddhism and Hinduism, and I love chanting 
Even in Christian religion, you'll find chanting. At the end of every prayer, we say, Amen. Even that is a form of chanting. And chanting is a very powerful way. I've spent many years as a massage therapist and a sound therapist. And it's amazing the effect that certain sounds have on our bodies. They can bring us out of um, fight or flight. They can relax the body, bring it out of the stress response. And they can really folk help our minds focus. And what I would love to do with you now is share my spiritual practice of chanting. So I want you to practice this too. So I want you to put your hands over your heart and we're gonna chant a very simple English word. If you're watching this video, then you understand the meaning of this word. And we're gonna chant using the word home. Home has the om sound and om means everything is complete. So we're gonna chant the sound of completion in the word home. So no matter what religion you're a part of, you can relate to the word home. Home is not just a place outside of us. Home is a place that we want to return to inside of us. It's a place of peace, of comfort, of safety. And we want to find that place inside of us so that we don't reach for it outside of us. And this helps us cultivate our courage. So when we can feel at home with who we are, then we tap into our inner courage. We're more authentic and we're more willing to share that authenticity with ourselves, with the people around us, our community and the world. And so put your hand, we'll start with the left hand, make sure your fingers are closed. Left hand and then the right hand, you place that over your heart. Take a deep breath in through your nose and chant home. Take a deep inhale again. Home. And one more time, we're gonna do it three times because three is the number of divine creation. the wind picked up as I was chanting. That's the power of the word. Um, I also have a Christian background. Both of my sets of grandparents are uh, come from Christian religion. They're both Baptists. And so I know the Bible pretty well. And uh, it says in the beginning was the word. The word was God. And so in the beginning was the word. Chanting, sound, sound is so powerful. So anytime you need to tap into your courage, go in the bathroom, go in the co your car, go somewhere where you can chant home. Touch your heart and chant home because you are always at home, no matter where you find yourself in the world. No matter what challenges you face, you are always home and home is where your courage is. I said we had three practices. That was the first one. Get yourself a spiritual toolbox and fill it with things that make you feel more connected to the divine. The next thing you want to do is first thing in the morning, when you first wake up in the morning, do the hardest thing first. Um, a lot of people will say first things first. Well, I like to say hard things first. Do the hardest thing first because that will help you tap into your inner courage. If you conquer your fear first thing in the morning, there's nothing you won't be able to do for the rest of the day. So conquer your fear first, hardest thing first. And the third thing you can do is dive into hard conversations. Have those hard conversations. If there's someone you need to forgive, if there's someone who made you angry or sad or disappointed, talk to them. Initiate the conversation. Pick up the phone and call them. Call that person and have a hard conversation. This for me, um, especially being an introvert, is something that was very challenging for me to do, right? We want to shy away from those hard conversations. We want to wait for the other person to bring it up so that we can just respond. But you don't want to just react to your life. You want to initiate your life. You want to initiate your courage. So initiate those hard conversations. I bet there's someone right now who you need to have a hard conversation with. Dive into that hard conversation conversation and just do the best that you can. When you can clearly communicate with someone else and you initiate that communication, it makes it easier for you to clearly communicate with your life, with your dreams, with your soul and your intuition. So have hard conversations. So that's three things. The first thing you want to do is put together your spiritual toolbox. The second thing you want to do is do the hardest thing first. First thing in the morning, do that hardest thing. And the third thing you want to do is dive into hard conversation. Allow courage to be an inside job. Cultivate courage inside of you. 
and it will radiate out into the world, into your life. And taking those bold, courageous actions you need to take to accomplish your dreams won't be so hard. The last thought I want to leave you with is when you can cultivate peace in your heart, it's so much easier for you to take courageous actions in your life. That was another episode of Crazy Courage TV. The conversation doesn't have to end here. Come on over to crazycourage.com where you can answer our question of the week, which is, what is one practice that you have in your life that helps you cultivate inner courage? Let's have a discussion below and share our tips and strategies below. I look forward to hearing from you. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that like button, and subscribe to my channel. For more strategies on how you can live your best and most courageous life, head on over to crazycourage.com and subscribe to my newsletter. Don't forget, Crazy Courage TV airs every Tuesday at 10 o'clock. I love having you guys here. Go to crazycourage.com to see all the previous episodes. If you enjoyed this video, like and share it with your friends. Also, if you are gaining motivation and encouragement from these episodes, please share your story with me. I would love to hear from you. So this is Kiana Miner. This has been another episode of Crazy Courage TV. Until next time, I'm wishing you much love, much joy, and crazy, crazy courage. Bye. Hello. What to do? In order to... <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs>